Greetings, tankers! My name is Adam Snellgrove and welcome to the last episode of Best Replays. And this time it's not even a clickbait. After 25 seasons, the day has finally come when we bid you goodbye. Thus, we've decided to make this one special, presenting it in a way how Best Replays was originally envisioned. Five replays, four medals and a Best Replay of the Week. So, one last time, let's get straight into it. Our top gun replay today comes courtesy of you in the ST2. An often overlooked tier 10 heavy tank for what exact reasons? Ah yes! Underwhelming armor, a turret with an obvious weak spot, and the gun as bland as a knock-knock joke without a punchline. Although, I can never get enough of this sweet double-shot sound. And with that little encounter out of the way, I'm sure you would rather force a close range engagement over a 300 meter duel. Oof, oof. See, this is more like my experience with these double barrel tanks. Though, in the right position, the ST2 can be surprisingly effective. <laughs> Get wrecked! Bye-bye! Now that would be eight frags on our tally in the most straightforward fashion I've seen. Just another day at work for you. And with a path to the indirect support vehicle wide open, let us enjoy the symphony of destruction once more. Now if only that 705A from the very start would show up. a pool's medal and a GG. A commanding display of skill by you scoring 10 kills while dominating the battlefield seemingly with ease. So much so that we were impressed enough to award this particular replay with 2,500 gold, our best replay style and the title of Top Gun of the Week. Congratulations! Onwards to our Sniper of the Week, Stoffello in the Charioteer Nomad. A much beloved TD by some now turned into a premium tank, while keeping those juicy 480 damage Hess shells. Got to love having those at our disposal against these thinly armoured enemies. That's an M6 double kill. Wait, would that count as an M12? Lovely! The fellow is dishing out all this damage and not a single purple tank has had a chance to even fling a shell at our hero.
Unfortunately, with the way this battle is shaping, it doesn't look like sniping will be a viable option much longer. Yep, seems like the fellow has full attention of this particular 703. Oh, get absolutely jebated! All right, looks like we're in for another pool's medal game. And while facing four enemy tanks is less than ideal, I'm a believer based on everything we've seen so far. Didn't expect you here. Luckily, disengaging from a turtle shouldn't prove much of a challenge. Nope. Oh no, this S-51 must have been praising RNGs to absorb this Hess shell. Whew, that certainly did not go as planned. Now with just 31 HP remaining, the path to victory has become a lot more perilous. And here comes the cap! Oh no, got to find an IKV! Oh no! The IKV ninja capped and this game is a defeat! What a heartbreak! I'll be honest, comment section, I fully believe Stefello had this game in the bag. After such a strong start, conserving their HP, expertly dealing with one threat after another and scoring 8k damage, the cap timer put an end to it all. And what could have been a legendary comeback ends up in a defeat. However, we shall not let a great performance go unrewarded. This the fellow shall receive 2,500 gold and our best replay style. Well done. For our next replay, we've got... Um, hello? Does this old thing still work? Ah, it does. Crank up the music, Zane. Hello, I'm Luke Neller and welcome to the best hijacking of the week. Sorry, Adam. So, what do we have here? Ah, it looks like today's crucial contributor is Tenji of King driving a classic E75 on Serene Coast. I do wonder if the E75 is still the same beast as it was. I guess we're going to find out. Mm-hmm. Nice, but a quick look to the minimap shows the centers being rushed. Teji of King, the King of Calm, decides to stick to the plan. That is, until the siren blasts. Teji can't cross until this patrolling barrasque is shooed away. Shoo! Now we're home, we wait. First customer. But time is already running out for our hero as the Reds are tightening their grip on the base. First kill. At that close range, that super Pershing won't last long against those light tanks. That's a start. 
but too little too late. Bang! Get out of here! Reload! Reload! Done! How on earth is Teji going to get out of this one? Minimise the direction you can be hit, of course. That means crushing this even 90 and taking the corner. Minimise the direction you can be hit from, Teji. There we go. Killing the T-92 blinds the enemy should make this easier. Wait, what's this? A BZ-166? Let me quickly check my handbook for veterans who haven't played in years. Hmm... yeah... uh-huh, I see. Huh, not so scary then. Moving on! After the meandering trot across the open field surprisingly didn't work, Teji turns their attention to the slightly more threatening TVP. Remember rule one of tanks, don't do what your dead teammates just did. Thanks for proving the rule, TS-54. Alright, get out of here you annoying little TD, you ain't the hero of this particular replay. So, if I consult this handy little tooltip at the top of the screen, it appears Teji still has a WZ-11114 on 1125 HP between them and the victory screen. Hey, look at that! I was right! And what a good spot to be in! Bounce! No! I bet Teji wishes they had saved some APCR shells for the boss fight. Now we need to buy time to think. Right or left? I'm betting on left too, Deji, but you'd better hurry else. You won't be ready for the easy shot. I guess you now need to... Whoa. <laughs> well, okay then. That brings them both to a one shot. Go, go, go! Eee! Aim at the corner! Aim at the corner! Ah! Oh gosh, Teji. Did you not make a mountain out of a molehill in those last moments? But a classic tank beating all these new kids on the block. I love to see it. Teji claims a Kalabanov's medal by dealing just over 8k damage and securing 8 kills. That earns Teji 2,500 gold in the last best replays of the week style. Ah, it was an honour to be back for this replay, but now my time is up and I've got to hand you back to Adam before he notices. So bye bye tankers, it was lovely to see you all once again. Yes, even you who will complain in the comments about my voice. Huzzah! Can you hear me? Huh. Must have been some glitch, the game froze on me for a few minutes. So, where were we? Ah, our brothers in arms of the week. Once again, we're back on Wretch here with Algabas OO in the Concept 5 and Jareem in the Manticore. A spotter and a sniper. I like this replay already. Unfortunately, what sounded great in theory didn't turn out quite as planned for our Manticore. Algabas, on the other hand, is getting their fair share of damage early on. Fortunately, not all of the friendly tanks share the same sentiment. And with every passing second, the likelihood of our duo needing to pull off a Giga Carry seems to be getting higher and higher. Uh-oh, seems like Jareem is not doing so hot. Now, if Zane would be kind enough to bring up the minimap one last time, 
It reveals the few remaining green tanks fully surrounded. Well, which also means we're able to attack in any direction. Lovely! That's the K-Line cleared of any enemy presence. Allowing our two heroes to envelop the enemy, basically outflanking a superior force which had all the map control just a few minutes ago. Yep, and that's exactly why a competent platoon mate is worth their weight in gold. 2,500 of it, to be exact. Oh, hi there! And with just a helpless 268v4 remaining... This game is a GG! Now that was a great display of teamwork by Algabaz00 and Jareem flipping the tables on the enemy team and pulling off a great win. Especially Algabaz who managed an impressive 11,306 damage in the underrated concept number 5. So, as is tradition, each of our heroes shall receive a boon of 2,500 gold as well as the unique best replay style. Congratulations! And for our very final replay, we've got Meitai in the Sheridan? On uh, Studzianki. Not an ideal map for an oversized light tank. Actually, just not an ideal map, period. But that's just me. Possibly because there's so few opportunities to deal damage. Unless you're blessed with a player like this Kunzapanzer on the enemy team. Got to love HP Pinatas. Oh, what is this? Lovely, that's surely going to make up for the lackluster start. Oh, you shouldn't be watching skill on your other monitor while you're in battle, WZ. It's not good for your health. Well, now that would be the last ally being put out of play. Speaking of being out of play, this BZ even minimizes their client. Alright, more of these kinds of enemies, please. And less of these annoying light tanks, ouch! <laughs> now that has to be all of Meitai's luck spent. So how does one outplay a T-110E4, backed up by a Manticore and an E-75? Well, uh, yeah. I honestly don't see a way out for Iro. Oh, come on, RNGters! You've got to be kidding me! Uh 
Uh-oh, there's that ominous siren. It's a straight up brawl now! Yes! Yes! And yes! That's a GG! What a ridiculous last stand! We had a pleasure to watch! Mate, I won the game against all odds, including some of the worst RNG I've seen! Ending up with a Calabanos medal, 8,820 damage, 8 kills and 1,596 base experience! A worthy winner of the last ever title of Best Replay, receiving 3,000 gold and our Best Replay style. Congratulations! And on that note, we shall conclude the last episode of Best Replays. For good. It has been a long journey over many years, but the time has come for us to conclude the show. We'll be back one last time with a final farewell. But until then, I've been Adam Snowgrove. And I've been Luke Nella. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.